Right, here we go then. So uh, I'm with Mr. Les Woodley. So as you know, I'm doing the British Skating Legends series of uh, DVDs. Uh, and it's included the likes of John Foley, Bob Alford. And uh, I think most people will agree that um, one guy who would most would be fascinated to hear from would be uh, yourself, Liz. Uh, so here I am in Birmingham and we finally get to meet up. And uh, so without further ado, I'm going to start asking you some questions, if that's all right. It is, yeah. So uh, first, for the record, so where and when were you born? I was born in Aston, Birmingham in 1935. Right. And has it cha it's changed a lot since then, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the house I was originally born in, born in was flattened during the war. Oh dear. <laughs> right. So well, how did you get into skating then? Uh, well, I lived at the back of the roller rink in Walford Road in Spark Brook in Birmingham. Right. Which was the Embassy Sports Drome. Yeah. Which at the time was the largest roller rink in Europe. So, uh, how did, but you, what, what age would you have been when you, you first started going Eleven. skating? Eleven. And was there any juniors back then? No. No, no. No juniors at all. So was that just general sessions you used to go to? General sessions I started, uh, yeah. Um, my first pair of skates were a, an old pair of lady skates from pre-war, which belonged to one of my aunties, who also went to uh, uh, the embassy, and they got steel wheels. Really? About half an inch wide, yeah. Did you use that uh, steel wheel? Did you use those wheels out on the road, or was it just always? No, on the no, they, no, no. They were sure. designed for the the wooden floored rink, but right. of course, the, no one used them anymore, and I yeah. changed them straight away to wooden wheels. Right. Okay. So, how did you get into speed skating? Then, so you get into the rinks. Well, speed skating, I developed into uh, more or less from fast skating sessions, right. and to start with, uh, I joined. Uh, the figure skating club and then the speed club at the same time so I've progressed through the um, uh, through the the dance and figure skating tests and different things but at the same time with speed and gradually dropped out of uh, the figure skating mm -hmm. and danced although I always kept a, I, I was always a dance skater anyway right I didn't know that right so the way I stopped I used to have the pleasure of skating with um, uh, skaters like uh, Sheila Jackson, uh, uh, Sh Sheila Ma Gardner, yeah. and Maureen Jackson, right, okay. who are both national figure skating champions. Yeah, Pre yeah. yeah. So they used to be my partners. Uh, did, so did you used to compete at figure skating? Did you? Uh, or was just used to? No, no. I, I, I just went to the usual tests. You know the. Uh, yeah. um, no, I, I can't remember any competitions figure skating. Right. So. On the, the speed skating side, so you used to do both, but so you joined the, the Birmingham club first? The Birmingham, it? Yeah, this this would have been, oh, I should think, 1915, 1949, 1950. Right, so you'd be about 14, 15 years of age. Or then. younger than that, probably, 13. Right, okay. So that, although there was no junior racing, you could still join us in I that age I joined in with the, with the adults, yeah. Uh, okay. And the club then was the Birmingham Eagles, yeah. yeah, which was really and became the Birmingham Roller Skating Club. I think I can't remember exactly. Probably about fifty or fifty-one. Who was running the club then? Uh, I think a guy named uh, Bunny Bennett, Bernard Bennett was his name, but Bunny Bennett was mostly responsible for reforming the club after mm. the war. Uh, with a guy named Jackie Struggles and one or Jack, two, yeah. one or two of the girls um, who were members then used to uh, do any. There wasn't much clerical work, but what clerical work there was was done by the ladies of the club. Ah, uh, okay, right. So uh, I knew Jack Struggles. Funny enough, funny enough, I went on a beat trip with Jack Struggles. He was a team manager. <laughs> Good <laughs> so, Yeah, well, yeah. That was some years ago. So when did you start to to think I'm quite good at this? I don't think I remember that happening. It was just a progression and competing against all the all the other friends. Right. And I suppose you got older and trained more, you got a bit better. So what was training like back then? Oh well we used to train three times a week, Tuesday, Friday and Sunday morning. Right. Always uh, at the rink? 
Or was it the ring? Oh yes, never anywhere else, only at the Royal Ring. Right. Um, and, and train between uh, the afternoon uh, skating sessions and the evening skating sessions. Uh, who used to run those sessions? Who well, was captain of the club or the members of the club. Really? I, so mean, I was only a lad, so yeah. I used to turn up and skate. So can you remember much of the training sessions? Well, I mean, like, oh, were yeah, they hard? Yeah, long, yeah you know? they were, they, well, we, we hammered it as long as we could. And we used to do five miles and um, relay practice and, and yeah, just, just sort of general training. As the years progressed going through, to, which we'll talk about later, yeah. then it got a little bit more scientific and we trained harder and over with longer distances and uh, different things, yeah. Did you ever go cycling? Did you use, or was it always just the skate inside? I used to cycle, but not in a competitive uh, way. Um, apart from cycle speed when I was about 12. Um, but I used to cycle to school and back, so cycling, of course, it did help in that respect, although I didn't realise it at the time. time yeah. yeah, well, I, I know, looking at the records, that, that the first time you made the national team, I think I'm right in saying it was 1953. Yes. So you'd have been 18. Well, yes. You, yes, you'd have been 18, yeah, yeah? just 18. And uh, in Venice. Venice. And you was third in the 5,000 metres. Which was the first race, yeah. Oh, was it? Is that who it was? Yeah. Can you remember the race? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Can you... Well, um, our, our management, the, the man, our team management philosophy was quite idiotic and I was always a bit of a rebel and spoke out from the time <laughs> and, the, and there I mean I hadn't even gone the first time so I did as I was told mm. and the management the, our team manager were George Lord Bert Lamb and I'm not sure if Henry Crystal went along I'm not sure I can't mm. remember I remember and they told us yes these continentals don't like a fast pace so go to the front and burn them off Oh, <laughs> when I look back, that's the most idiotic statement. Of course, we are not naive enough to think that we could, because we're all told, you know, that, oh yeah, you're the best, you're British. Uh, and that was a lesson very quickly learned. Right. Although we managed to hang on, because um, in the 5,000 metres, um, I think we'd have got the floor white with us, but there happened to be a shower towards the end. Of course, it was on the road. It was on the it? road on an outdoor track um, outside the casino in Venice. Yeah. And the shower suited me because I could, you know, being young, you could skate in anything. Yeah. And so we waltzed for the field. But the but Venanzi, Giorgio Venanzi, who won that particular race, was just too good for us. And uh, Dennis Hill just picked me over the line for the second, second and, and I was third my first race. I was quite pleased. But the rest of the races, of course, we're trying to follow the same things. And I drew Venanzi in about the third round of the sprints. And um, I was told, yeah, well, there'll be fastest seconds and so forth. Go for it, you know, and see if you can burn him up. Oh, <laughs> I've never <laughs> been so humiliated in my life when <laughs> Venanzi came past me with about 50 yards to go. And he must have, I must have left me 20 yards in his wake. Really? Yeah, uh, good lessons though. Yeah, well, yeah. So I suppose people like, well, Henry Crystal, I don't even recall Henry Crystal ever being an international skater. No, none um, of them were. No George Lord, Bertie no. Lamb, no. No. So they'd never actually compete. They'd only watched, they'd never really competed. To my knowledge. Yeah, to my, to my knowledge as well. I don't recall them ever being in any, yeah. any of the teams. So, well, that's interesting. So you say Dennis just picked you for second. Yeah. So, was you racing, Dennis? I mean, was the teamwork well, or not? No, in no. Days? Well, no, there wasn't. No, there wasn't. It was just the instruction were go out and burn them off. <laughs> uh, uh, humiliatingly embarrassing. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, what what wheels would you have used then on the Wooden wheels, uh, horn beam. Right. And even when it rained. It's, they'd be all well, they were slippy, but but, we, but I could well. Dennis obviously could control it better than the rest of the field. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it probably had it in our advantage. Well, it's funny the fact that I I, I, mean, I find it funny. That you, you was a world medalist before you won a British title. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, you know well, what I mean? Is it like you know that 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 to me says that what a 
how hard it was to win a British title, really. If you was a, well, if you was a world yeah, medalist, yeah, you know, I never thought of it like that. Yeah, well, you know, I, I mean, that, that's how it seems to me. Is yeah. that you know, I'm not saying that these days they're ten a penny, but like to, to win a British title these days, it's still quite, you know, uh, got, got carry some kudos. But when you consider that people were, were, were world medalists before they even triumphed in a British uh, mm. competition, that, you know, I think that speaks volumes. So, but. Um, the year before uh, Venice, um, you won the Jessen in '52. I was 16 then, and I won it at Leicester. Yeah. And as I remember, was. I'm not certain, but I think I was off about 40 or 45 yards. Yeah. And that was your first. Well, it might, have been, might have been more than that. But it was your first major win. Win. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I'm right in saying it was the first year the Jessen was ever held. I didn't know that. Yeah, it, 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 it's because obviously for, for those watching, it's an open handicap race. Yeah. Really, I suppose, there's a championship to, to give some of the lesser skaters an opportunity to win a championship medal. Yeah. But, do you know, I mean, do you remember that race? Yeah. Do you remember, yeah. Yeah. I can't remember who was in it, but I remember the race very well because I was very nervous before the final. Right. Did you want to race up to them? Or was Club races, but not an, open, not an open race. Not an open race. So that was your first win. So that really set you on the way. Yeah. Well, well yeah. So, if I was to say to you, I mean, I know you just said, oh, you know, you never looked at it like that, but how hard was it to win a British title? Because, I mean, there must have been several rounds in some of the instances. Well, there were. Um, you usually got, usually four rounds, each quarter final, semi final, and final, mm -hmm. or during one sort of e uh, late afternoon, evening. And um, well, most of the competitions were exactly the same, just to, an, uh, to a, the same as the Jessen. You know, the last last race would be about nine o'clock at night, I suppose. But you'd go all that way or wherever it was around the country for one race, effectively. Oh yeah, so you to, could get no taste in the heat. Oh yeah, we used to go from Birmingham to Herne Bay, yeah. which is the longest trip we made. Yeah. Um, but we all um, all over. I had a van. Um, Ray Roberts had an Austin Cambridge, Leo Easton had a van, and between us we all used to, you know, and share cars. I just remember that, I mean, but we managed somehow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, and, but like I said, is that you could go all that way and get knocked out in the heat and then not have another race. You could. Oh, you, well, you could, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, the, which would suggest that perhaps it was more of a social, or it was as much a social thing as it was. A competition or well no it was you know we were all really fired up for the competition yeah. it, um, there wasn't much social uh, really no social, well there was obviously, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. We're, we're all pals but it yeah. was uh, dog eat dog on, on the on the track as it is now I'm sure yeah well it, it certainly is I, yeah, but again it is that I find certainly from like my years in skating and certainly internationally anyway but even domestically for our uh, certainly our club um, it's quite a, a team event, in other words, you'll work for somebody else. I mean, was the, that mentality back oh, then? Oh, yeah, yeah, it yeah. Was? We used to, and in fact, in later years, particularly in the Midland Club, yeah, uh, we were, I suppose, very strong. And we quite often, if it was a distance race, um, probably not a championship, but if there was something like a three mile uh, right. or whatever, we would go out to burn off the opposition. I remember uh, in one one in particular where Danny, Ricky, and I, um, Danny Kelly, Ricky yeah. May, and I went out to, and we just we just kept going two laps at a time, at quite a fast pace. And in the end, the last one to drop off was Leo Leo Eason. Um and then we fought it out between ourselves. Right. Okay. So it wasn't a fix or anything before, yeah, yeah. but yeah. we'd get rid of the opposition first if we could. And yeah. I mean, this didn't work over a, a mile, but it, for a three or five mile race, this would uh, we it, used to do that. It's funny because it's you know you sort of went the Midland Club, and now from the Midland Club came Mercia, and then came Birmingham Wheels, as yeah. you've seen today. Yeah. We'll talk about it a bit later. And it's funny that 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 mentality that was instilled, I mean my dad has a lot to do with the Birmingham Wheels Club, but that mentality of of being a team and, and making sure that it's the club that gets the trophy is still very prevalent today and I think it stems from those Midland days 
and, and and I really do, and I know because he was brought up in that environment with Ray Roberts and you know, and uh, and Danny and, and Ricky, but it was very much you know that certainly when I was a, a lad coming through the ranks, you know, and my dad coaching was that the club comes first. It's the the club's going to yeah. win, and uh, and some people fell by the wayside because they just didn't agree with that policy, you know. But that's how it's it's been. Oh no, we know. always. Uh, I think you know it's sort of like a national well. Even in ordinary competitions, yeah. we'd compete with each other. Yeah. But you would help each other as well, well if you could, yeah. very much so. So, going again, back in time then. So, 1953, bronze medalist, you'd won the Jesson. 1954, the Worlds were in Bari, but you didn't go. I was in the army. Oh, and is that what it was? You, you got called up for... Yeah. So where was you stationed? At the time then, I was stationed in uh, Honiton. Right. In Devon, okay. um, and um, although I was given permission to get the trials, I couldn't make it all the time, and of course, so I never got picked. Uh, okay. And my skates were uh, not up to scratch because I'd just taken them with me, and I hadn't got the facilities to put them right. And because I was a rebel, uh, it was mostly um, George Lord and uh, Bert Lamb. I was excluded all that because I didn't attend other trials and anything like this. So I suppose I couldn't really complain, but I was still, I thought, good enough at the time. Particularly yeah. on the track that it was on, a, a smallish track of the sort we're used to, but... Yeah, yeah, I've, seen, I've seen some of the photos from Byron, it was yeah. it was a, a, like a rink circuit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yet they, they still, but I mean, you, by then, I mean, this is bronze medal in the world, and you'd made the team, you'd have thought that but uh, was the trials, the, I mean, if regardless the trials of the racing... Were held, the, the trials were held at Alexandria Palace. Right. But I'd only, I'd only been able to attend, I think, one, I think there were two or three trials, I'd only been able to attend one, in which I did quite well. Yeah. But um, my skate, they, then they, for some reason they looked at my skates, so I remember this quite clearly, and, and they were not probably as good, the wheels weren't as good, but I'd, I'd got no access to wheels. I was in the army, going from an army camp yeah. to the rink and back, and no one helped you in those days. You looked after your own stuff and your own skates. So they were, so they would actually inspect your skates? They did see. mine. Really? Yeah. And so but what have you got to do with them? Well, <laughs> I've got a cracked plate on the front of one of them. Right. It didn't affect the skates. Yeah. Um, it, it was where on quad skates where you had a stop on the front of the yeah, skates and, yeah. and so they somebody noticed oh they said this is not very good and that was another reason and they yeah so so they, they were even... you know i've never thought about that from that day to this and to you just really? remind me yeah that they would yeah but that they would even well i think yeah an uh, excuse or yeah, yeah but they only they only inspected yours so they didn't inspect anybody else's no not to my knowledge <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's a bit unfair <laughs> well uh, so again, so it was another couple of years, and before you finally because yeah. well, I was in North Africa for eighteen months, and there was no worlds in '55 as it happened anyway. Well, they didn't miss them, and so I, I came back uh, into the picture in uh, January. I came out of the army January 1956, and '56, of course, then like October that year, um, Barcelona, Barcelona, yeah, and uh, we've seen some uh, small. Video clip yeah, we have, of yeah. that, yeah, which was um, very enjoyable. Very enjoyable, yeah. yeah I mean, for all forty-eight seconds of it, but you know, and it's in Italian, but still enjoyable. Um, but you got medals there again, yeah, the second and the third. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you remember of Barcelona? Uh, funny, probably less than I do of, of any of the others. A very tight track, uh, yeah. and there was a lot of uh, shirt pulling by the Italians, which I suppose they still do. I don't know. They don't get the chance much these no, days. But, There's quite a few other nations. Who well, are, yeah, but they did, yeah. and this happened in subsequently in Venice as well. But they, um, um, yeah, it was good competition. I think the Italians were the best. Uh, maybe in retrospect we could have sneaked one, but um, they were they were the best, and we were again. We, as a team, I felt back. We weren't really prepared as a team. Mm. We happened to be club mates. I mean, of course, with which, Graham which, and, which with and, Graham, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Leo Easton, and, and, and myself, yeah. um, and Jeff Wright. Yeah. Uh, but he wasn't a club member, of course. But yeah. the it was good competition, um, 
And in retrospect, the Italians must have been on drugs. Really? Well, I remember <laughs> looking back years later that um, you know, it's quite sort of uh, libelous, isn't it? But it won't get translated. But, so you're all right. But I can I can look back in retrospect and see the state that we're in when they were finished. And one guy in particular, Loriano Lorry, who finished one race, and he literally blocked us out. I think that was one of might have been the five thousand. I was sitting there. Yeah. I don't know. And it was arms and legs trying to absolutely hold him back, and there yeah. was no. I mean, no way he's qualifying or pull them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when he finished, he was out. I mean, out, and his eyes were gone. And it didn't occur to me until many years afterwards, in, in retrospect, that. And I looked at two, and I thought about a few of the others, and they were on drugs. You reckon? Oh, yeah. 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 Or some sort of yeah. stimulant. Oh, that's interesting. Because there's no check on anything in those. No, days. no. And it's interesting because it's not something that you associate with sport. 50 years ago, no. or 60 years yeah, ago. it must have been going on. You think so, yeah. 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 It's, that's very interesting. Uh, it, it, it's, um, it's interesting because I know Danny Kelly, when I saw Danny uh, some months back, and, and he alluded to it to start with, and then says, he said when he was in Venice in 62, I think, and he said, oh, this guy, like, he was on drugs, and then he and then he withdrew it and says, well, I shouldn't have said that type no, of thing. But, well, it's too late now. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it, yeah, I didn't know Danny had thought that, but yeah. Yeah. It was just a statement to me. It was interesting to hear it from from yourself as well. And Barcelona, and and just thinking about it, is the fact that um, prior to Barcelona, Barcelona, I'm trying to think, that you used to skate three skaters from four in an event. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I think so. Yeah. I, I can't remember. Right. Um, yes, I think it was three from four. Yeah. Well, I know when I saw Leo, he said he fell just before the line in one event. And uh, and I think you that was where you got second second or third one of the one you medal that there. that and was and Grand Leo was, was trying to go around the outside yeah. of Laurie yeah and Laurie sort of oh yeah brought him down oh right okay barged him wide because um, yeah. Leo and I were, were I can remember it funny we go to go I was trying to go up the inside Leo was going around the outside and he clobbered Leo right. Yeah. And that's how Leo fell. I mean, I don't mean he thumped him with his arm. Yeah, but, but he, he skates him wide. Yeah. 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 So, Barcelona, so we spoke about Barcelona. And I know you said you didn't remember the uh, Leo skating for Germany. No. no. I'll, well, I'll show you a photo later. I don't remember that, no. You don't remember the relay? Well, you couldn't have been in the relay. And I, the reason I say that is there was four skaters, and I know that Gramstead and Jeff Wright got third, and I know those two Italian teams were first and second, because they had two Italian teams, right. which meant that there was yourself and Leo, but Leo skated for a German team because their guy was injured, so you must have sat out of the relay, which I think is that clip of film but that sitting you're down. sitting down I, next to pass. I cannot remember that. I don't even remember there being a relay. Right. Yeah. So, probably, I don't remember it because I wasn't in it. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know why or whatever, whether yeah. I'd... Don't know. Injured. I don't remember an injury. I don't remember. No. I just don't remember. So, again, right, okay, 57. Now, 57 is an important year. Barbara went to Montfalcone. Oh, no, that was 57. No, years. no. 57 is an important year because it was your first British title. Oh, I well, beg your pardon. <laughs> I'm, 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 <laughs> it, could have, it could have been important. You'll have to edit that bit That's all right. <laughs> no, 57. Yeah. So, you won the half mile at Urn Bay. Did I? In yeah. 1957. Yeah. Now I'm going to ask you: Did you, you, you from what you said? Do you remember your first British win, the British title? No, to be truthful, I, I remember winning the half mile. But um, I can tell you, it was second and third. Forrester really? and, and Eason was really? third. Yeah. And you, yeah, and I, I was thinking that. Yeah, I thought that you I might. I don't think I ever lost round Urn Bay. Oh really? Yeah. Other than the Jim Lippiot situation, which we'll come well, to later. That, yeah. <laughs> right, so yeah, so that was your half mile, so that was your, that's really set you on the road to, to winning titles. And uh, But then, um, yeah, 58 was Fanai Ligure. Yep. And uh, Barbara went to Fanai Ligure, yeah. but you didn't. I fell twice in the trials, ah. and that sucks, was excluded. So the trolls were the be all and end all. Then it wasn't whether you were oh, no, going no, really no. well in, no, in, was in the race. This was re it was quite ridiculous. Um, I'd uh, as I remember, 
been right at the front in the first two of all the events except that I fell twice so I didn't come anywhere uh, and the, as a result of that I was excluded which I couldn't believe but um, and very upset but yeah oh. but I always bear in mind that I was always at odds with the powers that be. Was you, was you outspoken would you say? Yes. Yeah. Do you think that was a good thing or a bad thing? In retrospect I, um, it was the way I was. Uh, yeah. I remember standing in a chair in Alexandra Palace. <laughs> oh, this is quite quite true in the in the restaurant. Um, when I was enraged at the, the way that the timekeepers had made a, a mess of the lap times and too many laps and and caused some of our skaters or one of our skaters, I can't remember which. Anyway, I stood in a chair and I'm trying to rally all the guys to support me. That was a sort of a stupid thing to do, but. Oh, was it stupid? Yeah, well, that was know. me, I'm afraid. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's what's funny is that, like, you, you know, that 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 really, I mean, that sense of character and that, you know, that sort of passion, if you like, obviously helped because you, you know you're probably one of the most successful skaters the country's ever produced. You know. Well, you you know. Yeah. Well, it it, it uh, yeah. I also got suspended by <laughs> the um, the National Council. Um, of which I was a member at the time. <laughs> That's a bit later on. Oh, I, uh, again, over a similar thing. I, it was over my attitude towards the the hierarchy, yeah. and I was bringing them into disrepute, so they said. Uh, but of course, they'd got all the friends. On the, I mean, it was the ice council as well. It was the ice and rise, right. and um, and in fact, I think it was the year after I'd won the Vanderbilt. Right, okay. So, <laughs> well. Yeah, yeah, mm, that's interesting. Yeah, because I mean, I was the Vanderbilt, was quite a, a big, yeah, yeah, big thing to win. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you did, so when Barbara went to Fnac, did you, I presume you went and watched him? No. Oh, did you not go either? You I never went to. afford to. Oh, right. Don Brown was the manager. Yeah. Did he have anything to do with selection? Or was it. Did Don have anything? Yeah. To, I don't know. Right. Okay, but you were whatever it was, you were dropped. Yeah. Yeah, because I think the team was Danny, Leo. I know Dennis Stafford went. Did he? Yeah, Dennis. He only ever went once, and that's where he went was Finale Gure. Um And I can't at the moment remember who was the third man at this moment in time. But anyway, Jeff Wright. It could well have been Jeff Wright actually. I think it was Jeff Wright. Yeah, but it was the you know, but I was surprised when I looked back through the records and didn't see your name on the yeah. team sheet. Well, that was why. Because the, the track was awful around um, Moorgate. The trials. Yeah, trials. Yeah, and the, yeah. I mean, pavement and God knows what. Yeah. And uh, well, I fell twice, and that was it. Yeah. I was there. I've since tried to look up that on, on, on Google Earth the track and more, but it wouldn't exist you, anymore. Yeah, is no, it? No, no. You wouldn't recognise it. I mean, there are a lot of bomb sites still there. But it was London. It was uh, London Bridge, wasn't it? And, and not far from not, London Bridge. Yeah, uh, not London Bridge. Yeah, but uh, London, Bridge. London Wall. London Wall. Yeah. Yeah, so they said, yeah, but, uh, it yeah. wasn't far from Tower Bridge. And Tower Bridge, yeah, and more, yeah. So I, I tried to look and see the bomb, but because I know they had the trials there for years. Because I remember going around corners with curbs that high. Really? Oh yeah. And uh, I always used to stay very tight to the curbs. Yeah. So as it turned the track. Yeah. Ah, well, and by now, of course, you'd be married. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, really, that was an opportunity for you to. to, both, go to yeah. Go yeah I was very proud for Barbara to go. Yeah, of course. Well, who, you know, which, who, who wouldn't be? And so, in, in round about fifty nine, you switched to the Midland Club. Yeah. Why? Can't remember. Really. Just well, I had great pals with Ray and uh, and Ricky and I, and, and I think. Um, I don't know, I just think we wanted to change. Um, and I like the idea. Of, um, I can't remember, to be true. Just any specific reason. I didn't fall out with anybody in right. Birmingham or anything like that. Yeah, it was just because there, there was another club set up. You, you see, it was from the, the Mad Hatters. It used to be the Mad Hatters, of which Leo was a member, funnily enough. Yeah. Because I, 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 when I was a kid going again, my dad used to tell me story. The, the story that my dad used to tell me was that. They wanted to set up another club, and they approached the the NSA or, or to to register a club called the Mad Hatters, and 
they wasn't allowed to because the name was seen as derogatory. So that's how the Midland Club came about. But I doubt I did, true that is all. I, I I've know. never heard that. But that was what no. you know, my dad used to tell me. Yeah. You know, but whether he used to get that story from Ray, I don't know. Um, well, I don't know. Yeah. But obviously, the, so there was a Midland Club formed. You don't know why the Midland Club was formed. No. Just a, a change. But you, when I spoke to you sometimes, you said Barbara was already a member youth. Well, Barbara joined before I did. Yeah. But again, just for fancy the change. Yeah. Well, she may have joined because... Uh, she hadn't really been uh, a member of the, um, the, the the Birmingham Club as long as I had, because I'd right. been a member, I suppose, since before I went in the army and that. Well, hadn't she had? No, I don't remember. She certainly joined before I did. Okay. A year, only a year, for a few months. How would you describe your relationship with, with Leo? Wonderful. Really, yeah? Very competitive. Yeah. Against each other, but very good pals. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, so it's I always thought Leo was the cleverest skater uh, of all of our crowd. He was the fox. The, the fox, a good, a good, good description. Yeah. He was a very, yes, he was a very, yeah, very he clever. He skater. told me Henry Crystal gave him that nickname. He said, really? Yes, yeah, he because he. I didn't know. You never knew when he was going to make his move. No, he was, uh, yeah, a, a clever skater, talented skater. Yeah. So, how did you meet Barbara? I met her at the roll rink. Yeah, when she yes, I, I, I met her at the roll rink. There are some funny things, but I wouldn't put them in this tape. Okay. Not, not nothing. But, but <laughs> Barbara always forbade me to. Uh, she was a learner, an absolute beginner. The first night I met her. Really. Yeah. Well, that's how. Obviously, with your input and coaching, you know, she went on to be a, a world medalist. So that must have. She did. Been, yeah, yeah. Yeah. National champion that year. Well, uh, uh, am I allowed to ask about the swimming? Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> <'Cause> I <laughs> she was in, she'd been selected for the Olympic squad in 1952 to swim at Helsinki. Yeah. And the strange thing is, a cousin of mine was captain of the Olympic cycling team in those games. A guy named Tommy Godwin who's been in the news very recently. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've seen the, yeah, I've seen him with his bike. And well, his, his, my cousin. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah I've seen him on the Birmingham so, Forum. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, that's by the by. Um, and I knew Barb was a swimmer, but I, and I, met, I met her at the rink. And um, we were 15, so this was quite a while before uh, she turned. Well, she, she, that, so that's when she started skating. And um, because of skating, she. Uh, stopped going training and, and or missed the training anyway she wasn't actually selected to swim for, for she was in this squad and she mm. was dropped right which her father never forgave before because she would have been a certainty to go <laughs> yeah do you think she ever she regretted would, that going oh, as well, a she, she was um midlands champion a swimmer and yeah. she was lucas national champion and stuff like this yeah a swimming yeah oh yeah she was uh but so why skating for her then, do you think? Because of me. <laughs> Nor to you, eh? <laughs> well, yeah, we, 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 yeah. Yeah. we got together, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's funny because it's a side, obviously, that I didn't know. Um, I never met Barbara, I, never, I was never fortunate enough to meet Barbara, but it was funny, I didn't know about the swimming either until you, oh, she was, you mentioned. She, people thought I was a sport. She was phenomenal, and just to, just to carry on that for a moment, I mean, we, when we packed up skating, uh, we took up 10 pin bowling and she held a house record of two bowls for a couple of years and uh, she was virtually at uh, international level at that sport yeah. and then uh, we started playing golf and um, she represented the county once she was a single figure golfer amazing yeah so uh, she's quite a sportswoman yeah yeah sounds I mean amazing is it like because obviously all my attentions have been on skating. I only ever know yeah. the skating histories. You know, it, it's interesting to note, you know, the other stuff that. Well, that she's very been, high level at yeah. uh, at uh, other sports. Yeah. Uh, sportsmen tend to be though, don't they? You know, oh, yeah. good, good well, sportsmen yeah, tend to, yeah. you know, they they tend to be not good at everything, but they tend to be very good yeah. all rounders almost. Yeah. And in nineteen sixty, then um, you set some uh, world records. 
on Brixton. At, at Brixton, yeah. So how did that come about? Well, I just decided to do it and, and I don't know why, when we realised how fast Brixton was, we realised that we were never going to match those round the Birmingham track. Yeah. Although that was the biggest, as I mentioned, the biggest indoor track in Europe. Yeah. The fact that the Brixton was, you skated it almost like a circle, yeah. one long bend, made it much faster. And so I approached the management of the rink and said, would they allow us to mark out a special track? Because it said in the rules that each track had to have straights. Mm -hmm. You don't have two straights and two bends. And the straights on the track that we marked out uh, what I think from memory about only a few yards long, right. they're almost non-existent. Right. And the and so then we marked the special track, which of course enabled us to set the records that we did. It's a pity we didn't have longer time because they were all set virtually in one day. We had yeah. to go down, mark the track out. I got an architect that. friend of mine to draw the plans. Um, just an aside, I've still got them somewhere. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. um, and um, we, we didn't get, even get any preparation or practice for it. We went down one, one weekend, marked the track. The next weekend, we went down and just set the record. We never thought that they would last long because it was just to do it. It was there yeah. to be done. Yeah. And we thought, that, well, other guys will have a go later yeah. and murder these. I mean, I thought that the Brixton boys on their own track, especially Folly and yeah. uh, Wortley, yeah. If they'd have ever tried, it would have beaten our times easily. Right, but they never did. No, no, and and you, as I said, you, you set and you said Barbara. Barbara set all the records up to um, a mile, which is yeah. the five hundred thousand and fifteen hundred meters, yeah. and the half quarter half and one mile. Yeah, and I did those. Um, I did those in one session. Which the t which the same team of people who I'd been arguing with the management, should we say, yeah. made the right cobbles of it, <laughs> and I had to do it again. This is all in one day, right. and I so then I had a second go at it, yeah. about an hour later, and set the times that that stood. I think the mile was two forty seven or something. Right. Uh. Um, no, two thirty four, two forty seven was the one I did in Birmingham. Two thirty four. Um, but I thought afterwards that, that that could have been brought well below 2.30. Really? Yeah. Um, with some practice and yeah. properly. Yeah. And then later on in the same day, I did the hour. Mm. In fact, it was only about another couple of hours after that, that I did the hour. And those could have been a much, much faster if I hadn't already mm. blitzed two miles. So how was it all planned? I mean, did, did, was, it, was it your idea, was yeah. it? And you thought, I'm going to go and have a go at this yeah. and just, yeah. And But did you, yeah, how did that work? You had to get special recognition from the... Oh, from we the had NSA. to get the agreement of the NSA. Yeah. yeah. And they had to supply the timekeepers, presumably, and the lap scorers and... Uh, oh, yeah, they did yeah. everything. They supplied everything, yeah. But, and, and in terms of being recognised an official world record, um, they, they were, they were oh, recognised, yeah, they weren't were, they? Oh, yes. They, um, stop the camera just a moment. Right, well, we just took a short break there while you uh, went and got your, your, your records out. And uh, so I'll be borrowing those and photocopying those. I, didn't, I wasn't expecting that. Um, do you, you were just about to say about approaching the Guinness Book of Records. You, you tell me your story, I'll tell you mine. Well, I did approach it many years ago, but it wasn't a very uh, determined attempt. Right. And I did send the, the, them to the... I think I sent them the Guinness Book of Records, but I got them returned. Mm. I don't think they would have. I don't think I sent them to the right people. But anyway. And what was it for to, to do? What? Just to say, just to claim that it was the most world record set in a day. Right. Okay. Well, well, you might know this. You might not, but you might know this. Is that the record that you set for thirty thousand meters still stands? Still stands the British record. Yeah. And you know that, dear. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not the oldest record, because the oldest record is Leon Goodchild's for 50,000. 50, yeah. Absolutely. Interesting. Did you pick that up from the internet, or did you know? No, I knew, I knew Leon's was the oldest. Oh, but did, did you know? I mean, did, because the, around, for the British records, I'll tell you the story around the British records, around about 1970, 71, it, British records sort of fell by the wayside. Um, they used to have the old NSA handbooks. Yeah. And, uh, and, 
then when the handbooks got too large, because they used to put everything in there, they 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 abridged them, and the roll of speed section was virtually nothing in it. Yeah. And over the years, it just got lost. And then the British records, there was never published any British records. In 1994, I was off work with a bad back, and I borrowed all of Leon Goodchild's uh, old NSA handbooks and made a, rec made a note of all the British records from them. My mother used to keep all the old race programmes. I went through every single race programme and marked down the times that were the fastest. I also went through old international records where British skaters had competed and where there was a time attributed to a British yeah. skater in a distance and marked down that. So it took me 18 months, but I established a complete list of British records that are still used to this day now yeah. by the National Federation to to determine what is and what isn't a British record. Yeah. And that is how your 30,000 metres British record oh, well, still stands today. Sure, thank you for that. Well, yeah, well, I, yeah. <laughs> but no, because I took it from the old NSA handbooks and nobody's ever beaten it. No. So, but of course, you know, now there's road and track. Yeah. So of course we set on a track at Brixton, and that's how it, how it became. But I think Pat Barnett went on to break. Well, she barbers. did that. Uh, no, she didn't break Barbers, uh, but some of her times were, uh, I think, faster than mine. But you got to bear in mind that I'd already been out on the track on two, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. quite strenuous attempts, and we yeah. did it all on the same day. Right. And so the paces were knackered, and I was well, excuse me. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. 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 So, it, but I just thought it's it's, it's nice That's to know that you know. Uh, that, oh yeah, that, no, yeah. no, no, so, I knew that. So Les Woodley still British record holder, and there is something. So, uh, between 1957 and 1964, you won at least one British title every year, with the exception of one year, 1959. <laughs> didn't win anything in 59. You didn't win anything in 50. Well, Jim Lippiet was awarded the oh, mile. Oh God, yes. In 1959. So I still well, I did. Tell me all about it. Right, for the well, record. The final. Um, I, in all modesty, think I was the fastest starter all the time that I was competing, which was uh, quite, quite an asset. But, and of course, the start at Herne Bay was quite, uh, quite a, uh, an important thing because the such a short track and difficult to pass on. Uh, well, I I jumped the gun and was immediately penalised five yards, which, well, I thought that that's that, but and, however, um, I managed to pass... Leo, and, Leo yeah. and Danny were in the right. final. Well, I, I managed to punish, I, I managed to pass Danny and Leo uh, and by the time I got past him, Lippiot had pulled away a bit. I, I, fought, I caught him back and passed him up the last straight. Now there's no question mm. that I was in front of him. Um, and when the when the results were announced, I was announced. Uh, well, they announced Lippiot first, and I immediately said, "I'm disqualified." I couldn't think what for. I said, "I'm disqualified," and then they announced me second, and that was absolute rubbish. Mm -hmm. And there is, this is not sour grapes, I've said no, this from, from yeah. the day it happened. Yeah. And Red Smythe, who was a club mate of uh, Lippiot, was the line judge. And a lot of other people disagreed with him, he was a line judge, so his, his, his uh, verdict uh, stood, and that was another row I had, but I mean, um, I was accused of sour grapes. But I, I was a, probably a yard in front of Lippiot over the line. Really? So it wasn't close, close then? No, no, not, not the sort of thing. There was a, um, no, it wasn't. I went right inside him at the last, uh, easily upside him. Uh, he went quite wide. I think he was very tired. And I, I got him easily. Uh, right. And I just couldn't believe it. Uh, a couple of questions from this is that the, I'm intrigued how you went back five yards. So I thought the start at Herne Bay was, was back, back against the wall. I was put back around the side. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. There was, I was put uh, back round the bend, sort of thing. Quite a bit back as well. Right, right. So the photograph we've got is just before you did that, then, yeah. obviously, because yeah. yeah, we've seen, yeah. So, so, 
And the, I think we see it probably rankles with you more now than it did then. It did, yeah, because yeah. it was just a decision and it was a, a race that I hadn't won. But I never realised the implication of it because that spoils seven in a row. Yeah, it does. You wouldn't have known that at the time, obviously. Exactly. But, you know, but yeah, it's... Uh, but you was defending champion. Uh, you yes. would have been defending champion. Yeah. So that must, uh, again... Well, yeah, I was number one. I, and number I one, also... Yeah. That, was, that was the only thing that rubbed me at the time. Yeah. I relish being number one because the mile champion was always number one in handicaps oh, and really? stuff like this. Yeah. There's a story that Leo told me actually was that if ever you was off one yard, you always used to go back to the scratch mark. Is that right? I don't remember that. He said he said oh, he would never. He said. Oh, with Lippiard, yeah. I think oh, I, did. I, don't know. I, think, I, was... I think he's right. Oh, I, think right. I did. Oh, did you? It, it was a it was a, a sort of silent protest on my behalf. That right. Okay. Leo's got a good memory. He just said, "Well, I'll tell you why. It was because you won the Jesson off one yard, one year, and I and he said, no, he never.' And I said, well, the record book says, he says, yeah, but he never won it off one yard. He actually won it off scratch because if he was off one yard, he would never start off one yard. That, he would start that off was, scratch. So that would have been the following year. Right. So I must have won the. It, it is. Yeah. I won. I won the Jesson in. Um, when did I win it first? Well, if I check my record, you won it in 52 That's first. Right. And then and, 60. Uh, and I'll tell you when you And when then I'll, 64. Well, I'll tell I you when you won it. Is. You won it in 52, or 55 yards, because you wanted to know. I thought it was 45. Yeah. You won it in 57, off one yard. And you that was it. That was after then. That, that was after have... the mile. That was after. Yeah, that's right. No, that was fifty-seven. So you was that had been before the Jim Olympiot mile because that was fifty-nine. So that was before it. But you did win it in sixty-one, off scratch. So the Jesson. So it wouldn't oh. have been the Jet. But, no, but, it but wouldn't. yeah, it wouldn't have been the Jesson. But yeah, Something. funny how your memory plays tricks. But yeah, so you won that. But you did win it three times, and you were the first winner in nineteen fifty-two. Do you know? I didn't know it was a new cup. It was a new cup. Have you yeah. told me that yeah, yeah, it was the first time. It was whether well, it was a new cup, but it was certainly the first time it was raced for as an open handicap championship. Right, uh, so we just broke off uh, a bit. Just so yeah, we, we spoke about uh, fifty nine Jim Lippier, and and this is something I spoke to you earlier about, and and I know you've got no recollection of this, and I don't, you know, we don't know the 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 full story behind it, but I'll tell you anyway. Uh, when you won the mile in sixty four, this is. And you'll see this because I've given you John Folly's DVD, yeah. and I think he talks about this in the DVD. Um, he, John Folly thought that he'd beaten you. This is this is John's story. This, is, this isn't my it's John's story. Is that he, he was he thought that it was close on the line, but he thought he just nicked you on the line, and uh, he he maintains that you wrote him a he said a very very nice letter. He said he said and it said to it said in there that um, basically. You might be right, you know. You may have got it on the line. Um, I don't think he was sure or whatever. But what happened to you, John, in '64? What happened to you? Happened to me in '59 with Jim Lippiot, yeah. and it sort of balances it out. And that'll, that's what happened. Now, and John was quite, you know, he said it was a lovely letter, and he said I've still got it somewhere. I never saw it. But, but uh, I'm just thinking you don't well, remember that. I don't remember writing to John. And absolutely, in all honesty, I don't remember having any doubts mm. that I was uh, across the line mm. first. In fact, Ray Wortley, I thought, was the nearest. In fact, I don't, I don't even remember who was second and third then. Yeah. But uh, I, I know Ray that. Wortley at one stage <laughs> in the race... Uh, Almost got blew around the outside, and, right. and that was tremendous. Mm -hmm. I mean, because they're around the outside of Brixton, having sort of done it once myself. Yeah. In fact, I did it once in the Jesson. Yeah. But I did it when the field all bulked together rather than uh, sheer speed. Well, 64 was at the Palace. Well, it was at Brixton then, the one I'm on about. Ah, uh, so that would have been perhaps 63, because I think, I think Ray was second there, but the Palace, it was, in actual fact, it was at the Palace, and it was the last year you won the mile. In that case, I don't yeah. remember that race. Yeah. I thought we were talking about Brixton. No, it was, Brixton uh, was the, the year before, twice, yeah, the year before and the year before that. So I can't, but, that may be the case then, I can't remember. Yeah, well... And it's what I, I, in my notes, and I know we spoke about it, it says about the, the Lippitt thing, and it would have been seven in a row, with, but you know, unfortunately yeah. it was five, and you know, that's what the record books say, yeah. but you know. 
Still on about the British Championship, so so you won your twelfth and final title, the half mile yeah. in I think it was April, but sixty four yeah. anyway. Was you aware that that was a record in itself when you won your twelfth no. title? Because did you know who held the record before you? No. Well, I'll tell you now. It was Jimmy Reed. <laughs> now Jimmy Reed was the guy who held. Uh... The record, mi the record mile before I broke it at Birmingham first right. and then at Brixton. Well, Jimmy Reed... 1929, he said. Didn't yeah, he? well, it, he, the actual fact, he, between 1929 when he won his first one, I think it was 1937, he won his last one. And he won 11 British titles. I didn't know that until this day. Yeah. So when you won... And that's why I wondered whether winning the 12th and thought that's it. But it was interesting that when you won the 12th title, because of course you won two in one year. So you equalled it and then bettered it in the same year, in 64. And uh, he held the record with 11. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, and you might well in that case, you wouldn't know either that your record stood uh, until 1979. No, I didn't know that. Mickey McGough actually bettered yeah, it. I knew that he'd bettered it. Yeah, when he won 13 uh, in 79. He went on to win 17 in total. Yeah, yeah. And my dad went on to win 18. Yeah. But when you consider the record, is now 42. Oh, God. Yeah. Are there more races now, then? Yeah. You know, there are more races. For a period of time, there used to be seven in one year. Well, there's only three so, for us. Exactly. So, you know, when you look on percentages, and over the period of time that you did it, you know, it, it's, a, it's still a phenomenal record. And I can actually remember picking up an old Guinness Book of Records of my granddad's uh, and seen the most number of British titles won by British skaters is Les Woodley with 12. I've got a copy of it behind Have you really? Yeah, and, that, and I, I, I always, it's funny, I, because yeah. as a kid, my dad was a skater, picked it up and looked, and of course he always yeah. had your name yeah. in. So, and I think actually, I wrote to the Guinness Book of Records and says, you're wrong now. <laughs> but it was some years later, yeah. as a kid. So probably that's what it was for. But So, who would you consider to be your greatest rival domestically? Oh, well, it was always Leo because he and I were of a similar age, and then uh, uh, Danny. But I think towards the end of, of my career, I think early on I was uh, I didn't bother too much, but I f put felt pressure with all this. I felt pressure from uh, I thought Ricky May in the end mm. uh, when I quit, and it would be I think no, no, Leo carried on a little bit longer than me. But I thought the best overall skater of all our era was Ricky Mo. Technically, it was technically uh, speed-wise, strength. He got he was very strong, and he was very fast. And he got all the he got the the lightness of touch I described that I think Leo had also got. Um, yeah, and as I think I said to you before, I think Danny mm. was probably the strongest. Yeah, because you only won the five mile once, I believe. Well, the, uh, once I, m I made a mistake with a laps at right. Alexandra Palace, <laughs> and I, I'd, I'd stopped, and it wasn't the bloody end. And once I'd changed wheels, my bearings had seized, and <laughs> Leo beat me around the last lap. I passed him with a lap to go, and re he repassed me. And when I came up, all my bearings were brown with heat. I'd put, different sized bearings in, and, uh, but that's not an excuse, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Leo is a great, tremendous competitor, and, uh, yeah. yeah, I think he won it three or four times, didn't he, the, the five? Yeah, I think so, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he certainly won, it was his race, basically. It was, yeah, he, he did well in Yeah, that. and lo like with Danny, you know, yeah. as your race, is obviously the mile, yeah. and, and it was funny, because I was looking at the record, and I thought, half mile, one mile, with your sort of distance, but as you say, it doesn't paint the full picture always. We all we all raced all the distances. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. On our day, yeah. whichever it was, yeah. yeah. The, but you still you won all three. Yeah, you know what I mean, so so um, is there a race that sticks out in your mind? It doesn't necessarily have to be the British Championships or even international, but a race that you sticks out in your mind as being perhaps your best race, or a race that did really really. You could pick out if you used to pick out a race, is the one that you could oh. think of. I mean, you've got plenty to choose from, obviously. I think, I think, well, racing are all tremendous fun. Yeah. We know those. I mean, there's lots of photographs where 
where any of us actually did, we were all grinning and laughing and enjoying it. Um, maybe uh, the one that I thought I'd sneaked was the, the last time I won the Jesson at Brixton. Right. Because before the final started, I'd got no chance. I mean, there's such a field in front of me. And He's Brixton, off scratch there, yeah. Yeah, and, and Brixton was such a, a difficult, uh, almost impossible uh, track to pass on if mm. you were up against the, the, you know, the, yeah. the good lads. Yeah. And in front of me, there was Ricky, there was the, the um, Folly, there was um, Wortley. And I, always, I can see it as clear as anything now because it made me smile. We all went off like bullets and they ran into a front runner. Somebody's eased, everybody's scared to move out and I just went straight round the outside. Now to do that round Brixton yeah. at speed would have been normally beyond my powers. And the only guy who I think might have, might have done it in normal times or normal pace would have been John Folly or Ray Workley on their own tracks. Yeah. But they all, they all, I mean, there was such a write-up in the magazine about it, but in fact it was because they'd all run into the back and they just eased that little bit and I'm coming back up at full tilt and I just kept going. I laid it too. And then it was in the back, once you got in front there, yeah. of course, then it was all over. Yeah, because it was a mile handicap, and it was a mile. Yeah, yeah. but that was, that, that was funny. <laughs> the, so, most, the most disappointing race yeah. was the 5,000 metres in Venice where I'd got it... In, in what, 62 this is now, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, got it in the bag, um, and I was lying um, second, I think, and I thought there was... Uh, I don't know to this day whether the bell wasn't rung correctly or I didn't hear it. Either way, I thought there was another lap to go, and as they went over the line, I made my move. Right. But, of course, I was racing a lap on my own, and it wasn't until I was down the back straight... <laughs> I realised there's nobody else with me. I don't really know what happened, but it was de I definitely got it. And you thought this is the you thought this is your big one. Yeah, and and it turned out not to be. No, it was a cobbles up. Who won it? Do you remember? Um, so did you place in that though? Did, oh yeah, you made yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. second or third, I think. I don't right, know. Uh, but uh, very very disappointing. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Well, I, I can sort of imagine. I was never that that one, that one hurt. Yeah. 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 That's. So that's I was probably, and I was skating well. I was, done that. I was absolutely everything going. It was all the others were in slow motion almost. It was everybody has a day like that now and again, and that was mine, and I made a mess of it. And was that your first? That was first proper time on a bank track as well. Yeah, I'd never, yeah, we'd and, never and, seen and bank track. And you loved it. Tell a lie. We we went on a, something of a bank track in a club trip. To Nuremberg in mm. 1959. Yeah, but that was very narrow. But this bank track was the sort that uh, I've seen at Wheels today. Yeah. not as big as that, but lots yeah. of room. Yeah, very fast. It was interesting that that uh, like I say that the bank tracks featured because I know John Foley won a world championship on a bank track, having never really skated one. You know, um, but but Brixton, Brixton would have made it. For he, him. he said that. I mean, they did train at Cosford. Which was the running track, which is a 200 metre, it's a oh, bank right. track, they used to use that. But, but it was interesting, but my dad always said that it was rink skating that allowed you to manoeuvrability on a bank track. Yeah. It was being out, you know, the rink skating was. And uh, so who was your, uh, who was the, the best skater you came up against internationally? Oh, without any shadow of doubt, Cavallino. Yeah. Luciano Cavallino. Really? Yeah. What made him so good, do you think? Just... <sighs> he was such a natural skater um he got everything he was uh, yeah. his judgment his timing um bonanzi was i think a lot of the italians think giorgio bonanzi was the best but i thought cavallini was the best yeah cavallini was the best track skater right which is what we were yeah we could only compare ourselves to him he, he was fabulous uh. right so we, we spoke about um Cavallini being the best best skater, so and uh, and we spoke. I'm just I'm just going through my notes now because obviously we've spoken about uh, Finale Guru and he didn't go. 1960 though the World Championships. Veteran. Veteran. Finally, you and Barbara make the team together. So um, 
so that must have been quite good as, as a husband and wife making the team. Yeah. Yeah. And and Barbara then gets a bronze in the knockouts. Yeah. Uh, in the not the knockouts, the uh, ten thousand. Sorry. And the, then the team's withdrawn. So I, I know about the Leo incident and about he was disqualified after crossing the line first. And then the following day was the, the knockouts, and I know Barbara. Uh, there was some. Uh, there's something that went on against the German girl. So what's the story there then? Well, I'm not sure if it was, was it against a German girl. I thought it might have been against one of the Italians, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. He, he but sort of. What happened was, mm. again, incredibly, they made a mix-up with the laps. Barbara crossed, it was only two or three, I think it was the sprint, it would have been the 500 metres or 1,000 metres. Yeah, so it's 1,000 yeah. metres, so that's well, quite, yeah. So Right, so, yeah, there, was, well, there wasn't a 500, was no. it, in those days, no. Um, and Barbara crossed the line in her heat or quarterfinal, or whatever it was, mm. first. Mm. And then they rang the bell that they got another lap to do. And it was quite, there's only two laps, I think, because I mean, yeah. you've got a big track. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and they waved her on. She should have just stood up and quit. Yeah. They waved her on, yeah. and she was in front. So, of course, she, she was flogging down the last lap. Yeah. And then the girl, either German or Italian, whoever it was, Passed her on the line, right. but she but she timed her run, but yeah. as it was, yeah, and uh, they're, they're quite definitely it was a huge mistake with yeah. the lap keeper, the timekeepers, they hadn't rung the bell, and so they did an extra lap. So the the thing, well, uh, the British team thought it should have stood for the uh, lap before for the lap before, which was correct. You should have done, yeah, um, and because they wouldn't alter it or even rerun it or anything, then the decision was made. In my opinion, wrongly to, to withdraw the the whole British team, which was stupid because we'd all gone out there to compete, yeah. and in the end, we just were there for spectators, which was a yeah. I mean, a very bad decision in my opinion. Uh, that's really interesting again, and and because again, I grew up with that story. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I didn't know until fairly recently that it was. That, that it was really Barbara's situation, the straw that broke the camel's back. Because yeah. I only ever heard, because uh, I suppose you not being around and Barbara not being around, but I did sort of grow up around the sort of the Eastons and that. I'd only ever heard about Leo's story where he crossed the line first in the 5,000, only to find that he was declassified to last place, yeah, because of his, uh, he'd gone inside the track. Is that not something you recall? I don't remember that yeah so the, this was the uh, uh, this is apparently in, in 60 leo crossed the line first thinking he's world champion there's an infringement whereby on the last bend that they said he put his foot inside the racing line and therefore he was declassified to last place um, and there's a classic photograph of the last bend with him his foot inside the line it's quite funny really i will have a look at that a bit later but i always thought that was the reason that they got the team no, was withdrawn no. And when I read the report, the uh, team manager's report, um, some years later, which is actually one of the NSA handbooks, it says about Leo, and of course, but then it says about Barbara as well, and that, that Bert Lamb withdrew the team. Uh, but there's some suggestion that obviously Henry also had a, a, a hand in that and, and you know, withdrew the team. I always thought though that, that it was the, you know, that the team thought, yeah, and went along with the right thing to do, but it's no. interesting, years later, I'm talking to you and Leo, no way should that have no. happened. I mean, all that did was cut our nose off to spite yes, our faces. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a stupid decision. Yeah. The the track uh, actually was a, an awful track. It, could, it knocked hell out of our wooden wheels. Mm, I can imagine that. And the, uh, again, you see, because the British team was always cheap skate. You looked after yourself, you bought your own skates. Mm. You got no help whatever mm. from any of the management sides or whatever absolutely nothing and the um, the italians had got boxes of team wheels boxes of everything else <laughs> and they'd also got quick release wheels right so they were able to, able to actually change the wheels during the race yeah on the skates right. it was just a quick yeah. click yeah. The cliff, cliff. Yeah. and they could do it and that made a huge difference right so mervyn wyber did marvelously to uh, I mean, he went away, but they obviously thought he's got no chance, and they let him go. But he kept going. Is that how he won it off the yeah. front? Oh didn't yeah. Ask, I didn't know. Oh, that he, he won, won it. He, he went. 
almost half a lap up before they realised that he wasn't going to die mm. and come back and they went after him but they couldn't catch him. Well Merv Wybrow had already got a bronze in the 5000. Yeah. Uh, that's that's the one where Leo yeah. got, you know, uh, got put yeah. back. So yeah, he. Um, I didn't realise though that that's, uh, he, he won it like that uh, off the front. So yeah, because I know Cliff Stafford was the uh, team manager for New Zealand. Um, when Merv Wybrow and Ian Hughes... Was it? Yeah. I yeah. didn't remember that. Yeah, he was apparently. I think because Leo was obviously competing, and Leo sort of took yeah. him under his wing. Um, the story is that that because Leo could obviously not be the team manager because he was competing. Um, Cliff Stafford was the team manager for New Zealand, and so he was the team manager when New Zealand got their first gold uh, medal. Right. So then again, I put some pictures on there. There's a picture of Cliff with Merv and, and Ian Hughes. So, um, but. You're right, they did cut the nose off to spy the face. I think that's generally accepted now because the, it happened again, a similar situation happened again in 78. Um, and this time it was my dad and Cantarella, and as a, they disqualified uh, my dad when they should disqualify Cantarella in a knockout competition, and the team was withdrawn. And again, they, you know, um, no, you, like you talk to Bob Alford, who he wasn't the team manager then, but he talks to Bob Alford now, and, and he maintains there's no way, had he been team manager, would he have done that? Well, you can't because all you do, all the other, all, all you're doing is letting all the other teams rub their hands with glue. Mm -hmm. Well, so really, I mean, a year later in '61, we still wouldn't send the team because of that. Yeah. And there was two championships that year: one in Gujan Mestras in near Bordeaux, and one in um, oh yeah, I know it was in Italy. Um, I can't remember. Where it was. Voltrega, yeah. I think it was. Ridic ridiculous. And you know, we never sent a team. <laughs> Yeah. You what, so he showed you when I was complaining all those years previously yeah. about different about management yeah. uh, that that I was right and it just reflected the I think Crystal was my, the main nigger in the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he really um, a volatile, uh, very small guy trying to be a very big man. Yeah, yeah. My, again, I think I've heard people say that. Generally, it was his own arrogance that that that, that you know the, the that team that the team didn't didn't. Bert Lamb yeah. was quite a nice, uh, easygoing sort of guy. Uh, George Lord was pompous. I, I run into him all. Uh, you see, you think Bert Lamb just towed the line? Henry called the shots. Yeah, really. Um, I mean, Bert Bert was a, a, a lovely man, but. Um, and then one or two others, his name I can't remember, who were nice guys. Ernie and, Matthews and was a... He was a nice man. Yeah. Ernie Matthews, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, no, fair enough. Long yeah, time ago. It is a long time ago, but it, it's interesting to capture those... But those, those chances scores. are missed. That's it. You can't get them back. No, you can't go back and race it again. No, no, you can't. So, you know, it's what might have been, isn't it? Yeah. Well, well, 62 in Venice, then, was your last time in a, in a, yeah. in a GB shirt. You, obviously, you wouldn't have th thought of it that way then. No, I suppose not. No. So, but so, it, what do you, I mean? You told me about the the race in Venice, the the, the five thousand. The five, yeah. Um, the the um, I made uh, a mistake in the uh, no in, in the in the in the thousand meter sprints. Hmm. I got myself in the wrong position with the Italian race, I can't remember his name. Uh, and just as I went, I thought, right, I'm going now. He hauled on my shirt so much, I was upright and falling backwards, but then he carried on. And I thought, well, that's it, he'll be disqualified. Yeah. And nobody said a word. Really? And, yeah. and I, I was livid at that. Because yeah. that track suited me, I, I loved that. That yeah. bank track, I'd never come across one before, and it was absolutely fabulous. Well, you got your chance now, you've got one down the yeah. road. But we'll <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, uh, the, a few years too late. The, I often hear about Italians pulling shirts. Oh, I mean, gosh, yeah. you know, they reckon that Danny Kelly come across the line in second place, minus his shirts in one race in, in Fernando Gure. And were there other nations that doing that? Right. No, the only people I, I knew, I, I experienced or saw do it were Italians. Really? Yeah. Did we ever think that we'd do it back, or did we? Well, ever... it wasn't our way. Yeah. You know, we we. 
I, I don't think I, well, I certainly didn't ever experience anything um, between any of, of, of our era mm. ever anything like that, yeah. or any any um, any malpractice of anything. It was always hugely sportsmanlike, and, mm. and yeah. I mean, I remember once a race at the Palace, um, and Rick had got me. Uh, caught me absolutely perfect in the final and I tried to stop him and I hit him so hard I didn't mean to yeah. and I grabbed his arm and held him and pulled him back in and I knew then I was disqualified yeah. but but no no I mean it was not deliberate or anything like that uh, we, we, we had wonderful competition but it was always in the I mean they say oh well we're British unfortunately we were mm. it might have paid us to be a bit more aggressive maybe at times but it never crossed your mind to be. It never crossed your mind to no, go and no, grab their no, shirts back. No, 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 no. And I, I have heard stories in the past about like where there's been races domestically and somebody's fell and they've stopped and waited for them. You know, I'm not so sure that would happen these no, days. No, but, but, um, yeah, but I know what you mean. Yeah. It's a it's a different sort of era. But and yet the the Italian mentality because again when my dad raced and even when I raced to probably to a lesser extent, certainly when my dad raced in the in the mid and late seventies. It was all grab, it was all pull, it was, you know, I mean, there were riots in Argentina when the Italian grabbed the Argentinian guy, you know, they had to pump tear gas into the crowds. Oh, yeah, oh, and they had oh, riot yeah. police, yeah, yeah. What year was that then? 75, I think that Good was. Grief. Yeah, they, they had, to, they, they did, they had the riot police, the tear gas, the lap, they, they, the crowd in, come onto the, the track, they, they were going to lynch the Italian. So, and, uh, so yeah, and, uh, you know, it, but that was the, the sort of mentality, and I think this, this, you still see a bit of that around in, in the sport at the highest level. You don't see it domestically because there's not that many races, so it's quite apparent if anything does, mm. like that does happen. But I always thought it was something about the era, the, the, the like mid-70s, late-70s. But talking to you, it's obvious that even as far back as the 50s, oh, yeah. it was prevalent then. It was, yeah. a, it was a mentality rather than a... It was, it was certainly, it happened to us in Barcelona, mm -hmm. um, um, it certainly happened in Venice as well. One guy pulled my, I mean, the, the, in the sprints, mm -hmm. the, the, I can't remember his name, there's only two of us on the Guardi track. Guardi, no, I don't know who's there. Yeah. Well, yeah, that rings a bell. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. only two, and, it, and in one of the other, in the 5,000, we had, as it happened, because like, there's a Japanese guy, that's right. He oh, was, yeah. He was like, yeah, he was lying. The, and they were all dead, and I, and, and and I'd got them all, you know. And this yeah. bloody bunch, of, and I went woof, and I made connection with somebody. Yeah. She, 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 I don't know. Well, it was yeah. the Italian guy, but I don't. And I really hit, hit, yeah. hit him with my, my arm, and I'm, but yeah. Uh, so there were several occasions where it happened to, to us as teams, and I mean Leo uh, went. Um, more times than me, so he must have had even more experience yeah. than I had. Yeah. And this one guy, I say, got him in the, in that five thousand in Barcelona when Leo was up the outside. So, in '63, Danny and Leo won worlds, but you weren't in the team that year. It was Dave Reynolds and Ricky May went as the four men. You must have been there though, because I remember you telling me, because I know the story about Leo won the 10,000 and then he gave the 1,000 the following day to Danny in the final. I wasn't there. You wasn't, oh, you wasn't there, no, oh, you no, weren't watching, no, I thought you were there no, for some no, reason. No. No. But, but you don't know why you didn't make the team that year, because that would have been quite, I mean, you'd have been really one of the top guys by then. I can't remember whether it was work or something, I really don't remember. I so, really don't remember. You know, when, when you look at Nantes and... And you'd look at, um, I mean, it's a road circuit, but you where, look... Where were the trials held? I don't... Um, ah, was this when the trials were around Sanderson's? It could have been. It could have been. It could have been. I don't know. I think the trials might have been around Sanderson's. And I, I for some reason, either something was wrong. I couldn't handle it. I couldn't get around it right. at all. Um, mm. I got a feeling the track was rough, and, and I used to, on a on a rough surface, I used to really crucify my wheels. There was something like that, mm -hmm. but I couldn't I couldn't make it. I couldn't handle the. Uh, it just seemed really because strange. I was still. I mean, still I still won. You two won nationals. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Well, I just found it really strange the fact. And that I think it was a very long, 63. arduous track that they held the trials round, and uh, it's only a vague memory. I can't. Yeah. I can't but I certainly wouldn't have put Dave Reynolds. Oh no. In. But, you know, and that's not belittling the no, guy, no, but that's no, just a no, fact. No, no, is the no, fact no, that no. I wouldn't have, you know, if I was selecting a team in '63. I didn't even know that. Couldn't remember, I didn't know that Dave Reynolds had ever won a badge. That, that was his one and only time. And Ricky May was the other gun, you know. So, I, 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 well, I, I, a funny story, and, you, and you'll see this on DVD. But I, I, a funny story. I says to Danny because we spoke about his world title, and I says, Danny, I says, in the four races or whatever, I says your positions was. 17th, 16th, 15th, 1st in the 1000. I said, what happened? He said, I was saving myself. <laughs> Which I, that, that tickled good me. Answer, yeah, it yeah. was a good answer. But um, again, um, Danny and Leo, world champions, I mean, these guys you were competing against and beating back home, how did you feel when you heard that they were world champions? Well, pleased for them. Yeah. I mean, that we... That we Managed to stuff the Italians. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, um, was you? Did it make you feel a little disappointed that you wasn't? It made me disappointed. I, I mean, not that didn't. The, yeah. The, the the biggest disappointment I had was the five thousand meters in Venice. Venice. Mm. That was a, that was mine, and mm. it was there. And I and and somehow there was a mix of the laps. Mm. And I was sure it wasn't me, but perhaps it must have been, I don't know. But I definitely, you know yourself when you, you race, you know sometimes you're in a position where nobody can, nobody can beat you, and that was mine. Yeah. Yeah. There it goes. That's how it goes. Does it, not, that, not does it bother you, but do you ever think about what might have been? Or is it as time moved no, on? No, it, just... I fully enjoyed all that I did, and I think... Uh, I think I stopped at the right time, um, and work was becoming quite a pressure at the time then, and, and different things. No, and, and our daughter Nikki had been born. No, it. it um... Well, I, I want to come to that in a minute about about your retirement. But before I do, I just wanted to to uh, go back to Barbara actually because she won two British titles. She won, yeah, in 1963 she won the quarter mile yeah. at Earn Bay. Yeah, um, but in in year a year earlier, she dead heated in the half mile. I believe it was the only dead heat, the first dead heat I've seen in the British Championships at that point. Right in the half mile. Do you remember those races? I mean, you know. I, I don't. I remember the. Uh, I remember the. Um, I don't remember Barb winning the quarter mile. Yeah, yeah, nineteen sixty three on Herne Bay. I know yeah. that. Um, that I remember the tie. With yeah. Chloe Ronaldson. Yes, that's it. Yeah, that Around was, Birmingham, wasn't it? Under the embassy. Yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. I don't remember much of the details we're up to because Barb was a strong fast skater, mm. but uh, she was a bit. <laughs> to be a bit clumsy. Mm. She felt quite. She, you know, she, like I said, Ricky was a dancer. Yeah. Light um, on his feet. Light. Um, Barb wasn't as light on her feet if she got into rough and tumble. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but she was just very strong. If she was out in front, she'd power, mm. power away. Once she was in front, she was fine. Yeah. But it was she wasn't a fast starter either. Well, I, I mean, I I look at Barbara's two victories, and think that's some achievement. When you think against Chloe, who was a uh, you know, thirty-seven times British champion yeah. individual, and you you know we talk about your record being twelve. Over a period of time, and yeah. there was only three races for the women. There was only two, and yeah, and of course she, it was, yeah. yeah, and she won thirty-seven titles. That that really tells you something about it's her. Incredible. Yeah. How old was she when she stopped? Uh, well, has she stopped? <laughs> she has. Yeah, funny enough, I saw her not long ago. But, uh, Give her my best. I will. Well, I spoke to her. I sent her some DVDs. <laughs> she phoned me and thanked me. But I saw her at Bob Alford's ninetieth um, back in March last year. But I'm going to be doing one of these with her. She's agreed to. To do this with me, so I'm pleased about that. Um, but yeah, she's really well. Uh, she's got married. Yeah, oh, right. yeah. He's uh, he's in his thirties, I think. So and uh, you know, William and I met I met her husband. So and she's very happy and good. 
Yeah, uh, but she stopped skating. Her last race was 1983. Oh, right, yeah. So I do know that in 1980, she was born in 39, so whatever that is. So. She's 40, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, she got second in the time trial, um, but she won the relay with our club. The so. I saw a race, one of the races, the inter international races. Yeah. Where one of the Italians, it was in the sprints. The ladies had 500 meters, didn't they? They did in the internet, yeah. In and one of the Italians yeah. deliberately fell over so they'd have to rerun the sprint because they knew that Chloe hadn't got stamina oh. to do it twice, and they did, did it twice. And they, it was a deliberate, it was so obvious, yeah, because Chloe was like a bullet, yeah, from a gun yeah. for, for the 500 meters, but she tired very quickly, yeah. Um, and so she, well, she wasn't a distance skater, but by God, she was a sprinter. She got medals at Worlds in the sprint, yeah, she got and, silver. And, and um, I've just remembered that. It might have been Venice, actually, where one of them fell over. She quite, and it was, it was obvious mm. when yeah. she watched it, because she was, she was miles behind. Mm. And the rules were, if somebody fell, they rerun it. Oh, really? Yeah. If they fell in the last lap, or... or oh, the, before, I can't yeah, remember. Whatever, yeah. So if it was with Chloe, I remember that. And I could also remember a language. <laughs> yeah. Now that hasn't changed either. So, 1964 then. So this is another big year really because you, you, you win the, the, the half mile and the mile, or the mile and the half mile then. And I think you, then you think you do one or two races or certainly one race. One, more race, one more race. Has to be struggles, I think it was. And you come second. But so. Tell me about retirement. What you was twenty nine? You was twenty nine. Twenty eight. Twenty eight. Okay. No, well, yes, yes you was. Yeah, you was coming to twenty nine. Okay, twenty eight. So you retired at twenty eight. Why? Because I don't know. I just made it my mind. I thought. Uh... But had you had you made your mind up before that that you were going to retire, or did you just do no, a I race? I think I tell you what, I've had enough. No, I said that I would. Uh, I think after I won the half mile. And then there was another race to come, and I said, I'm, after this race, I'm going to quit. I was under a lot of pressure business-wise. Um, as far as we were working on, on my own, I suppose I was climbing the ladder, and mm. I was there, there, everywhere. And I saw yeah, Nicky was born. Um, and I thought, I'll quit. There's no uh, major reason or anything like that. Uh, I felt I've had a good run. Uh, I'm not as sharp as I was. Mm. I'll quit. And I, and I just started, I started playing golf. No regrets? No. You never thought afterwards, a couple of years no, later, no. I wish I had a cade on? No. You was happy that you'd won yeah. everything you wanted to win? Yeah, and, or that I was capable of winning, perhaps. And no, I, th I thought, no, that's it, I'll... Um, um, I started, I'll, I'll, I'll play golf. Well, I, yeah. I didn't think that, I, I just sort of moved to golf. Yeah. Did Barbara... Did Barbara stopped at the same time. Well, she she quit when she was pregnant. Right. And she never and she never raced and she never skated again. Right. So so what year was that? That was sixty four. Sixty four. Well, uh, Nikki Nikki was born in January, so Barbara okay. really quit in, in the summer of uh, sixty three. Yeah. Right. So would that might have had a bearing on the fact if you yeah. know, Barbara's not skating. It's it, it, it all did, yeah. Which family? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I was quite happy, you know. It, uh, I thought, yeah. So, the, if uh, how would you describe yourself as a skater? And now I know that's a difficult question. I wouldn't like to try. No, it's I, I, I'll, I'll give you some I'll give you some input as to what other people. I was a better say. track skater than a road skater. Right. Right, and that's about all I'd say. I, I uh, there's a couple of stories which I, I you know, I mean, I love to hear the stories from different people uh, and about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, nothing like that, but, but to to the people I talk to, you was the consummate professional. You know, you you, you was um, not so much analysed the race. But you was very, very focused as a racer, as a, as a skater. And I'll tell you what, where, where that comes from. is because they were saying that, like, in that era, it was you and, and Danny. But Danny was more carefree with it. Uh, it, it they felt, he, you know, if you went into a race, Les was the focused one. 
Danny was the the winner winner for Dan to dance type scenario. I don't know how true that is. It's a long oh, time ago, yeah. but yeah. Oh, I think, but I think any of us, uh, even Danny, if you're winning, you you you're trying to win. You're not trying. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and I, I was I was I was always serious. I mean, like I used to time every race. Yeah. Every, not a mile, but uh, if I was racing a, a five, uh, I'd always time the miles or whatever, and, yeah. and things like that. And I always, and for not just for my race, for other people's races as well. Out mm. of uh, uh, that's how I picked up so many of the blooming mistakes, which used to infuriate me. Mm. Um, but no, I, I think I think I loved the competition. It was, uh, I mean, there was Leo, me, Rick. Dan, I mean, there was others as well, the guys from the other clubs, and it was, it was just exciting, it was brilliant. Well, the other story that I heard was that, um, and this I think is probably, this probably it best describes what other skaters thought of you, and again, I don't know how true this is, but this is what I was told, was that there was an event, and I think it was at Alexandra Palace, and Bill Sharman was there, and uh, he got the, the race program and saw that you'd entered and he picked his skates and threw them across the room and said, I don't know why I effing well bother because Liz Woodley's oh, entered. So, I think that's a bit of a different Yeah, well, you know, but... Duration. Yeah, but, and again, obviously I wasn't there, but these are the, these are the top... But I hear these sorts of stories quite a bit that, that you know, that you, there's a, you, you were held in the highest regard by your competition, I know a lot of people were also well, good I, skaters, but I'll really take, the I'll name take that as, as a compliment. Well, you I should. Th I think we were all. Yeah. Um, I, th I think we were fortunate. The, the, there was a there was a, 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 gr a group of us. I mean, loads mm. of clubs, all clubs in all sports are made up members. All yeah, the ones who perhaps don't always win lots of prizes, but they still go out every week and train yeah. and bash around. And we were very fortunate in that we had. A few good skaters that came up together, and we were all very competitive. But it, it actually drove us all mm. to improve our own standards. I yeah. mean, Ray, Ray Roberts was a. Um, I mean, he was right on the edge of, of being, if you like, amongst a very, very top flight. Yeah. In fact, I think he was amongst a top flight. Over a over a sprint, Ray was as fast as anybody. Right. Really? But he was a very thoughtful and and he was it was like your father. I mean, Ray worked tirelessly to promote and improve the Midland Club with Pat. Mm. He did, yeah. He was uh, Ray was a quite thoughtful guy. And he, he, I know my dad had utmost respect for Ray. He was almost like a second father. Yeah. I suppose, and the, my my very last race, and I was probably skating as well as I could skate, was a mile. It could have been this, uh, around, Bur around the embassy. Yeah. yeah. And I used to take the lead around the embassy, always with about four to go before other people, I perhaps could last a bit, I don't know anyway, but I used mm. to take the lead well out. Uh, and I tried to pass Ray and I tried and I tried <laughs> and he was going faster and faster and we were, I think a few year, yards away. I wouldn't be sure who were the other two. I have a feeling it was Danny and Ricky and we were absolutely, and Roberts was flying and I couldn't get past him. And oh. in my last race he beat me. Really, and but it was a, 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 a thing of amusement to both of us, both of us, you know. Yeah. And because he said, "I bloody got you at last." And, and that and, was it. And yeah, but but there's no. I mean, it was nothing but pleasure and animosity. No animosity. Yeah. So the golf. How did that come about? Well, another skater you might not have heard of, a guy named Ken Thrasher. Yes, I have. Yeah. Well, he used yeah. to be, and uh, we were friends with him and his wife and we used to go on a Saturday afternoon when we weren't skating uh, mostly in the summer mm. over to their house in um, by Marston Green and the one Saturday uh, they were Ken's brother came to see us they were going to play golf and the women go, were going shopping in town so I'd got the choice of shopping in town or golf so I thought oh god I've got to golf and from that very first time I was hooked and I've been absolutely hooked ever since. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I know we're here to talk primarily about the skating, but I've got to touch on the golf because it's been, you know, you skated oh, for some, but it's been well, your life for 40 more, more years. Of a, yeah. yeah, it has more of our life. Yeah. And, and 
and for those people who don't know, I mean, you, you played with the greats, Seddy Ballesteros, and yeah, you know, uh, I, you know, I, you know, Sandy Lyle was a personal friend. Yeah, yeah, he used to stay with us. Yeah, yeah, over in Spain. Yeah, you know what I mean. All these. So, so you got your handicap down to one, one, one stage. I was, I think I was one for a week, but I was two for <laughs> a few years. I see. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but again, I think that's the mark of a. Of a real sportsman, like I said, is that you, you know, you were successful in one sport. You've switched to a totally different sport with a totally different set of skills, and yet you've been successful in that. You know, as you have with business. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, well, you, you, yeah. you know. But I think that's the, the the mark of the person. If you know, if you you know, it it, it does show that that yeah. you know, it's a mentality, it's a mindset almost. Oh, I don't yeah, know. yeah. And it's difficult for you to say. Yeah. I know. I I'm talking. For you, really, because it's how I see it, and how a lot of other people see it. And I know how difficult it can be to, to see it within yourself, maybe. Perhaps being in the right place at the right times, who knows? Well, how yeah. did you get into business with uh, with Ricky and Ray? Well, I used to work for an outfit called Gainsborough, and I progressed through there, but before, while I was on the shop floor, Ray was a lorry driver, and um, we were talking one night, he said, oh, I'm fed up with it, so cold. And I said, well, come on, I'll get your job at our place. So to cut a very long story short, I fiddled him into, because uh, he'd never been in an engineering shop, mm-hmm. in, into there, and he took, like, took it like a doctor water. And I also introduced Ricky from school right. to Gainsborough, and he went off and eventually started his own business as well. And uh, years passed, and Ray had left, and each, he, we, taught one, we were talking one day, and he said, well, why don't we start together? So we did. And um, I won't go into the details of how we did it, but we started in quite a successful business. Yeah. Um, and Ricky came on board? No, no, Ricky wasn't with us. Ricky oh, was, was he his not own with business. No, no, no. Oh, I thought you were... No, we used to work together at Gainsborough. Gotcha, I understand. And then Rick right. started his own business. I understand. And uh, Ray and I... Um, I think Rick, had, Rick started before us. I thought, right. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I think he did. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and so yeah, we had a modicum of success, which was fortunate. And you sold up, yeah, in eighty-seven. Eighty-seven, and is that when you moved to Spain? Well, I didn't move to Spain. We we each bought a place in Spain, no. uh, but I spent more most of the year there. I mean, I, I built this house at the same time as I built one in Spain. Ah, oh, okay. But we got we had an apartment between us down there, and. Uh, yeah, and, and sadly, I mean, 94, we lost him. Yes, yeah, yeah. Were your neighbours, did you have uh, Palmer's Close in Spain? Or? Oh, yeah, in the same estate. Maybe really the same there. golf club, we played golf. <laughs> oh, yeah. As we always did, we did everything together, really. Yeah. And Pat, Pat and Ray and Bob and I yeah. played golf, because Ray was a pretty good golfer. Was he? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he played with the old, uh, did he touch on playing with the greats as well? Well, he played, he, he, there are a lot of different people, I mean, yeah. Um, but oh yeah, Ray was a good golfer. Yeah, yeah. 94, that's when it was, yeah, and he yeah. didn't see it, he not see that long ago, because as I said, I remember. It's incredible. Yeah, I know. And uh, so you, you wouldn't say that you lived in Spain then, or, or...? No, I lived in Spain for most of the year, for many for many years. Because I know you're, you're backwards and forwards but still now. now. I'm, I'm, yeah, back and forwards more now. Yeah. Since I was part of it. Yeah, so you think if you think your your future lies back here now, do you? More here. I'll probably never cut my ties with Spain. Yeah. But uh, well, as long as I'm capable. Yeah. Because the golf out there is very pleasant, and <laughs> got a lot of, still got some friends out there. So, so when you retired from skating, did you ever ever think about going to coaching or management or judging or? No. Um, no. I cu- I cu- when I finished, I finished. Did you cut it completely? Did you yeah. just walk I, away and yeah, that was it? Yeah, I, I, I probably went skating another couple of three times. I went down, I remember going to Alexandra Palace the year after I quit, and Leo won, uh, I'm trying to think, he might have been the five, he won something. Yeah, yeah, I know if he was and I made the presentation. Yeah, I know. I, which yeah, which I was, uh, was and then I've got a photo of with me and a dicky bow and, it, and Leo yeah. having the That's couple, it. big grins on our faces. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. So, so you you um, fifty years away from the golf, 
50 oh, years almost yeah. away from the sport then. Yeah. And and like and here, here I am sitting with Les Woodley, probably one of, if not the, arguably, the greatest British skater ever to have stepped onto a track. Certainly from a lot of people's minds, not yours. Mm -hmm. and I know that's sometimes hard to swallow, but you know, when you consider your achievements and what was around and, you know, for a guy to have won medals at Worlds as, as often as you did, um, I don't think I'm doing you an injustice in saying that what I'm t telling you is a fact. But you went to the Birmingham Wheels track this morning. I did. For the first, so you've the been back to a time. track, yeah. a bang track. What do you think? I thought it was absolutely fabulous. I... I I can't understand why I've never been round. I've thought about going a lot of times, but I've never actually made the decision to go. And I, I don't. I think, in all honesty, if you hadn't have um, sort of contacted me and said, "Let's get it," I would. I still wouldn't have gone. Yeah. And I'm so pleased I've gone, and I shall definitely go again. And, and I look forward to seeing some competitions there. Yeah, yeah. I certainly felt, definitely it sounds, I felt the urge to. To skate again. I mean, that ain't daft, is it? No, yeah. Just absolutely so. Yeah, I could, I could, yeah, wonderful. And what'd you make of the inlines? Well, they've opened my eyes. I tell you what, did open my eyes. The price. <laughs> well, I mean, they had a bit. You, probably, mean, had a bit yeah. The last nice. pair of Dexters I bought, I think, were eight pounds. <laughs> I'm not sure. Probably. And you've still got them. <laughs> I've still got them. Yeah. yeah. In spite, I've still got them. Um, yeah, absolutely true. Yeah. I think you said five hundred pounds. Yeah, for a, a, a top notch pair of skates. Yeah, Dave. yeah, yeah. How the sport's changed. Yeah. So, have you ever? Um, well, you're going to obviously be more than welcome to come to Birmingham Wheels at any any time you like. You know what I mean? Um, I, I mean, really. Midland Club became Midland Olympic when the Mecca opened. Did you ever race? You never raced no. at the Mecca, no. So the Midland no. Club became Midland Olympic, became Mercia, which became Birmingham Wheels. And for a short period of time, Birmingham Wheels changed its name to cope with sponsorship, but that Viducci it was called. But yeah, but, but then it went back to the Birmingham Wheels, which it is now. Um, so really, you, you, you know, you've got a lineage with that club. You, even though it's Birmingham Wheels, it's, it goes right back to Midland. And if you look at the the headed note paper, Birmingham Wheels colours are green and yellow, but on there is also red, white, and black. As a testament to, to the history of the club. Oh, that's nice. It's uh, and, and uh, I'll have to show you some of that. Um, but uh, it's it, as I said, I know you'll always be made welcome. It's it's great. So you're going to get yourself a pair of inlines now, or what? <laughs> I might be tempted to try a pair on <laughs> when there's absolutely no one about, and apart from maybe you to to lend me a set or lend me a pair. Uh, I won't. I won't, yeah, I I won't would, tell anybody. No, no. Providing I've got, <laughs> you know, on some obviously wrist, yeah. could probably go on my backside. But I would. I would like to try them. Yeah, I will try them. Well, that can certainly be arranged. Absolutely. But absolutely no. I'm, no I don't want anybody there to see. It. Well, uh, you know, okay, that can be arranged as well. So, golf or skating? Oh no, golf. How, disappoint now, how disappointed am I here no, to no, say that? No, no, because I mean, I'm, I'm looking at life now. Not about golf. I, I, I suppose if, like Leon, if I hadn't have uh, Leon Goodchild, if I hadn't stopped skating, yeah. if I'd known about the, if I'd known how good that was, yeah, a lot of years. How long has he been there? Thirty uh, years? Yeah, almost. Yeah, eighty-three, twenty-nine years. Yeah. I might have come back and just yeah. dabbled for a bit of pleasure, not yeah. competitively. Well, that's um, what Danny Kelly did. He did yeah. exactly. He was about forty four, forty five yeah. when he when he 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 come back and raced veterans and you know. He, did, and he, did he skate with inline? No, no. The the inlines didn't come about till about ninety two, ninety three. Yeah. He, he he skated on the traditional skates. And I tell you a story about Danny Kelly is that he came back at about forty five years of age after such a long time away because his kids wanted to skate. And to be fair, it was like he'd never been away. Obviously, not from a, an elite point of view, but he was. If ever there was a, a a case for, you know, class is permanent. He was it. You know, he came back. He skated, and he didn't do that many races. It was about nineteen eighty seven, but he, he he won. And round about that year, we did a, a marathon, Halter Grimsby, and. Um, 
yeah, a full 26 miles. And myself and Danny broke away off the front and I towed him round for 26 miles, the buggy. But, and I said, who comes to the line? Go on, I've done my bit, like, you know. And he won the Humber Marathon. Uh, uh, you know, that was nice of you. I don't know, but I mean, you know, it meant, it weren't that. I think it meant more to me the fact that he he win it than, 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 you know what I mean? It was that sort of, I, I, Danny was like a, another one of my idols, if you like. He was a world champion, he was a yeah, yeah, British champion. Definitely. So it meant a lot to me for him to go across the line. But, but I just remember the, that race and, and we, me and him broke away and, 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 he, and again he was like 44, 45, 46 maybe. Yeah, but it was a really, uh, it was really good. It was really good times, and as you say, you know, you can't turn the clock back. But no. but it'd been interesting to have seen you, yeah. you know, come back. Well, I can still skate on quads. I don't well, there you not go, very yeah. well. Yeah, um, well, a bit like myself. <laughs> no, no, I mean really, yeah. uh, but I'd, I'd like to try those. I mean, I must say, watching those uh, lads go around that track uh, really was quite inspiring. Yeah. You had your medals melted down, didn't you? Some of them. Some of them? I shouldn't have done. I regret it. Were they your British Championship medals? Yeah. Were they? Yeah. Into a putter? Yeah. What made you do that? Into two putters. Oh, was it? Well, I turned to golf and I thought, well, I'll, I'll, I'll keep a link. I did it on a mad impulse. Yeah. stupid. Yeah. I regret it. Really? It's funny because, again, I knew the story, but I was surprised when you said about regretting it. Oh, I do regret it, yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean... Uh, putters are putters, and, and you can't and, show it, and it? you can't use them in it because they're too heavy. Yeah, but that's still that engraved. They're upstairs. Yeah, well, like I said, it's a, you know, you you can't turn that back, and and it's done. Yeah. But it, it's it was an interesting thought, and something you know what I mean. But yeah, and and it, as you say, it still keeps that ink with the skates and the golf. But hey, so well, there have only ever been. Uh, two British world champions since the war. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah, three British champions, I should, I should say, since the war. Danny Kelly, Leo Eason and, and John, John Folly in 69. Yeah. But I think uh, if ever there was a case for a fourth world champion, I, th I can't think of anybody who, who you know, more than yourself. So for me anyway, um, you know, Les Woodley, it's been an absolute honour and a pleasure to sit here and, and chat to you for the last hour and a half or two hours, however long it's been, and, and it's been an absolute insight, so I'd like to say thank you very, very much. Well, John, it's been very nice over here, and I'm very pleased to have met you. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you very much.